second way of classification is based on density of solids. Under that, the suspensions containing diffusible solids. Now, generally, the drug which is under study in suspension dosage form is an insoluble drug. So, some drugs which are insoluble generally are lighter in density or in weight and they possess good wettability. So, such solid drugs when they are dispersed in a dispersion medium, they remain suspended for some time and after some time, the particles come closer and form an aggregate or it is generally referred as a flocule. So, these kind of solids on gentle shaking, they redisperse. So, such solids which are generally light in weight and which possess good wettability characteristics are referred as diffusible solids. So, these are also sometimes referred as simple mixtures. So, suspensions containing diffusible solids are sometimes referred as mixtures. Examples of drugs which have such characteristics of diffusible nature are light magnesium carbonate, magnesium trisilicate and magnesium hydroxide. On the other hand, the second type of classification based on density of solids is suspension containing indiffusible solids. Now, these are the solids which are insoluble, they remain dispersed, but when they come closer, they do not distribute uniformly. In order to make such system stable and to bring in redispersion or to hold the dispersed phase uniformly distributed, Generally, a suspending agent has to be incorporated in such formulations. The typical examples of solid drugs which are insoluble and indiffusible type are aspirin, chalk, sulfadimidine, phenacetine, calamine or zinc oxide. The third type of classification based on arrangement of suspended phase Either the suspension are referred as flocculated suspensions or deflocculated suspensions. When we talk about flocculated suspensions, these are the suspensions wherein the dispersed phase is distributed as an individual solid particle or in the form of groups. In other words, here the dispersed phase remains uniformly distributed and on standing even if the particles come closer, they form loose network of aggregates or referred as flocules. On shaking, such systems, they redisperse and lead to uniform dispersion. So, flocculated suspensions can either have generally diffusible solids. One example which can be mentioned with respect to flocculated suspension is antacid formulations. Talking about deflocculated suspensions, now in case of deflocculated suspensions, here the insoluble drug which is dispersed on standing will come together and form an aggregate and result in the formation of a sediment. Now this sediment is generally closely packed and it, this sediment becomes difficult to redisperse. So, deflocculated systems are more unstable and more difficult to redisperse. One example of such type of formulation can be when calamine preparation is desired. On the basis of fourth type of classification of suspensions based on route of administration, it could be if it is internal use, we generally referred as suspensions. So, whenever the terminology suspension comes, it is referred for biphasic systems, solid and liquid type meant for oral use. And if the system is meant for external use, it is referred in general terminology as lotions. So, sometimes the difference which could be of concern or importance with respect to suspension and lotion, both are biphasic in nature, having solid phase and liquid phase, the difference being only with its usage, wherein suspensions are exclusively meant for oral use and lotions are exclusively meant for external use. 
Talking in general about preparation of suspensions. Whenever the formulation of suspension is desired, the formulation aspects which has to be borne in mind include selection of right ingredients and the technique in the formulation. Mentioning with respect to ingredients, the ingredients which are generally selected in the formulation of suspension can vary based on what is the nature of drug because ideally it is the drug which decides whether the suspension which is going to be formulated will be having a diffusible nature or an indiffusible nature and also this will decide what will be the type of suspension. So, it is to be understood here that if the drug is having a therapeutic value internally then a concept should be clear that the drug under choice or the drug of choice decides that one should go with formulating a flocculated suspension because they are comparatively more stable preparations and this preparation is to be for oral use. And if the ingredient which is of a nature which is to be applied externally, then the concept should be borne in mind that if possible, flocculated type should be formulated. But if the challenge is not solved, then even a deflocculated can be compromised which is for external use. Based on the selection of the ingredients and the nature of the drug, if it is an indiffusible solid, Always it is important to remember that if indiffusible solids are to be formulated as suspensions then an addition of a thickening agent is compulsory. So, if it is an indiffusible solid, so that is why it is important to mention here that if a suspension has a diffusible solid sometimes they are simply referred as mixtures and exclusively the terminology becomes very apt when indiffusible solids are in liquid dosage form, they are taken for granted to be suspensions. So, thickening agent has to be definitely added in such formulations. There is one more classical uh, type of suspensions wherein we can have precipitate forming liquids, although not mentioned because again it ends up either in diffusible or indiffusible type. That is to say that when a precipitate forming liquid is incorporated in a dispersion medium, to establish a suspension formulation especially for example resinous preparations. So, when it comes in contact with the aqueous dispersion medium the liquid precipitates and the precipitate nature could either again be diffusible type or indiffusible type. If the precipitate forming liquid leads to a diffusible precipitate that can be tolerated just on shaking it shows uniform redistribution and if the precipitate forming liquid on addition to aqueous phase leads to indiffusible precipitate then addition of thickening agent becomes inevitable. There is one more class of suspensions which we generally refer as suspensions which are formed due to chemical reaction. So, broadly suspension can be having diffusible solids, suspensions having indiffusible solids, suspensions containing precipitate forming liquids and suspensions formed due to chemical reactions. So, as we have discussed all the four types and when we talk about the preparation methodology, all the four can be brought under the general procedure which is very clearly to be understood that it could be either for diffusible type of precipitate or solid or for indiffusible type of precipitate or solid. So, if it is diffusible type of precipitate or solid, it can be tolerated just by shaking whereas, in case of indiffusible type or precipitate solid, then we need to add a thickening agent. Flocculating agents are generally to be added in flocculated suspensions. As already mentioned that the suspension which could be formulated can be flocculated or deflocculated type. If we are intending to go with flocculated suspension wherein the dispersed phase forms flocules on standing and they are more stable preparations as compared to deflocculated type, then it becomes important to mention here that a flocculating agent has to be added in the formulation. 
Now, also it is important to remember while formulating a suspension that if the suspension is meant for oral use, then generally it should be aqueous based. So, if it is oral suspension, then water should be the choice for the dispersion medium. It is also important to remember while formulating suspension that suspension for other than oral. Now, if we are talking about suspension formulation which can be for external use, then the suspension can be formulated either based on selection of aqueous medium, non-aqueous medium or hydroalcoholic medium or sometimes exclusively oily medium as the dispersion medium. So, as already classified under biphasic type solid in liquid that it could be either meant for oral use which we call it as suspensions, it can be for external use which we call it as lotions, it can also be for parenteral use. So, here it is important to mention that if a suspension is other than oral then the dispersion medium can be aqueous, non-aqueous, hydroalcoholic or oily nature. Methodology. Now, when we talk about preparation strategy, we need to understand the general methodology. Now, whenever we talk about general methodology, it is again important to have concern with the uh, choice of drug and excipients critically. So, whenever we decide to go with formulating a suspension, our first choice is always selection of the right drug. Now, the drug which is suitable for incorporating to be into a suspension dosage form, it has to have or it has to meet some exclusive characteristics. First and foremost, the drug which is selected should have minimum solubility. That is, it should be insoluble drug. It should have maximum chemical stability because generally aqueous based dispersion mediums are selected it becomes very important that the insoluble drug which is selected has maximum chemical stability and also at the same time it should have good wettability. So, its wetting property should be good or tailoring of this property can be brought in. The next characteristics of the drug which will which is to be selected is it should be light in weight. That is generally the preference should be for the diffusible type of solid and also at the same time it should be stable when it is size reduced which is generally referred as milling process and also it should have good stability on mixing. So, the drug should be insoluble, chemically stable, good in diffusibility that is light in density, it should be stable on size reduction. And at the same time, it should not have strong electrostatic interactions for reason being that on dispersion, the drug should be repulsive so that they do not allow the particles to come closer and lead to aggregation. So, it should not have strong electrostatic interactions. So, these are very ideal characteristics when a drug is to be selected to be formulated as a suspension dosage form. After having selected the drug, the other selection is broadly under the category of selection of additives. Whenever we decide to formulate a suspension, we need to select multiple additional compounds which help in formulation of a stable preparation. First and foremost, selection of vehicle. Now, vehicle which is selected for oral use suspension as already mentioned has to be water. Water being universal solvent is the choice but when water is incorporated it brings in lot of challenges along. So, water is the choice of solvent system for oral suspensions. Second selection should always be towards wetting agents because the drug which is selected may be insoluble or has to be insoluble for suspension dosage form and the insoluble drug may have poor wetting property. In order to have a uniform distribution of the dispersed phase or the drug under choice has to be helped by addition of wetting agent. So, wetting agents which are generally added are surfactants. Now, these act by actually displacing the entrapped air on the surface of the solid and help in wetting property. 
So the wetting which is achieved is already as I mentioned is by adding surfactants having the HLB value between 7 to 9. So as one knows about hydrophile lipophile balance scale ranging from 1 to 20 and the surfactants having a value between 7 to 9 are referred as wetting agents and generally these wetting agents are added in a concentration of 0.1% to the formulation. For oral use generally the wetting agents which are selected are non-ionic surfactants. The examples of non-ionic surfactants which are generally safer to be incorporated for oral suspensions are either tweens or spans. And if the suspension is for external use and a wetting agent has to be added especially for example when we desire to make a culilla tincture suspension in such case the wetting agent of choice would be sodium lauryl sulphate. There are different mechanisms by which a wetting agent act. Either a wetting agent could act by reducing the interfacial tension. So classically surfactants are added in order to bring about reduction in the interfacial tension allowing the dispersed phase to remain in close contact with the dispersion medium. The second mechanism by which a wetting agent can act is by displacing the adsorbed air from the surface of the particle. So generally for this reason polyhydric alcohols are added who bring about wetting property by displacing the adsorbed air and thereby improvising the contact between the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium. Sometimes hydrocolloids can also be added wherein they form a hydrophilic coat on the dispersed particles and thereby help the dispersed particles to remain uniformly distributed in the dispersion medium. So this is by altering the surface property of the dispersed phase. So for example hydrocolloids they also bring about improved wetting property by such mechanism. The third additive which is to be selected critically in preparation of suspension is suspending agent. Now suspending agent also can be having multiple mechanisms. Generally a suspending agent can also be in some context called as thickening agents. These suspending agents bring about increase in viscosity of the dispersion medium or the external phase thereby it helps in reduction of sedimentation rate of the dispersed particle. So the basic concern here is when the viscosity of the dispersion medium increases the particle interaction of the dispersed phase reduces and the particles coming closer to form an aggregate will be reduced. So for that reason a suspending agent for example mucilage of tragacanth or compound powder of tragacanth is generally added in a concentration of 2%. Suspending agents are to be definitely added when the drug is in diffusible nature. As already mentioned in my previous slides that if it is an indiffusible drug it may have challenges in getting distributed uniformly in the dispersion medium. So for that reason a suspending agent is generally incorporated. The suspending agent can be of different categories. It can be from natural hydrocolloid class example acacia mucilage, tragacanth mucilage, sodium alginate or clays. So they are also referred as natural surfactants and also they come under hydrocolloid classifications because they have a tendency to form a hydrophilic coat over the dispersed particles. Also they may bring about increase in viscosity of the dispersion medium. So for that reason generally natural hydrocolloids are added. We have the second type of class under suspending agent which can be coming from semi-synthetic type. Now when we talk about semi-synthetic type of suspending agents we have multiple examples such as methyl cellulose, sodium carboxymethyl cellulose, carboxymethyl cellulose, hydroxyethyl cellulose or microcrystalline cellulose. So if we have so many choice available depending upon the characteristic of the insoluble drug 
and the shelf life of the product desired one can select the semi synthetic type of suspending agent we also have a choice of selecting synthetic types when we talk about synthetic type of suspending agents the choice could be carbopols colloidal silicon dioxide so it is based on the literature and based on the desired characteristics of the suspension under formulation a typical suspending agent belonging to either of these class or a combination of any of these categories can be chosen and incorporated in the formulation the fourth additive which is to be selected for the formulation of suspension is flocculating agents now flocculating agents are the agents which generally act by changing the electrical properties now flocculating agents typical examples are electrolytes now the main mechanism by which they bring about flocculation is by adjusting the zeta potential and reducing interparticular electrostatic repulsive forces so as already mentioned that some drugs bear charge so based on the charge of the particle surface there could be electrostatic repulsion so when there is more electrostatic repulsion it brings in more instability because of more aggregation so these electrolytes are added as flocculating agents which may adjust the zeta potential value and manage the electrostatic repulsive forces so that a stable suspension is formulated examples of electrolytes which are generally added as flocculating agents are either sodium or potassium salts of citrates phosphates or acetates flocculating agents sometimes can be polymer based now polymers which are incorporated may act by forming interparticulate polymeric bridges or they also may give a protective coating examples include cellulose clays gelatin or starch sometimes non ionic surfactants also bring about the mechanism of flocculation as they get absorbed at this turn layer so all these modifications out of this can be selected any one could be selected in order to design a stable formulation other excipients which are to be chosen critically include density modifiers as suspensions are heterogeneous systems and unstable systems sometimes the moderation or the tailoring can be brought about with the density of the suspended and the suspension medium so that is to say that the density difference between the dispersed phase and dispersion medium could be a factor in order to bring about stability in the formulation it is always advisable that there is least density difference between dispersed phase and the dispersion medium so when there is a challenge when the density is different some density modifiers can be incorporated and the difference of density between the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium can be managed to make it almost equal the next excipient which is to be selected with utmost care is a preservative as suspensions are liquid based and generally oral suspensions are aqueous based and whenever there is aqueous based formulation this promotes bacterial growth on standing so for that reason addition of preservative is inevitable and whenever a preservative has to be added it has to be selected with care for having broader antibacterial property or good preservative property and also one more important concern while selecting preservative is that it should not have a tendency to get adsorbed onto the drug surface as already mentioned that the drug has to be in fine state of subdivision because of better surface area exposure this could be disadvantageous in context of preservative because the larger surface area of the finely divided drug may lead to adsorption of the preservative onto the drug surface thereby reducing the concentration of preservative although it was added in an optimum concentration into the formulation and finally the selection of organoleptic additives should be done with utmost care because this is the category of additives which basically influences patient acceptability 
especially if the patient is a pediatric patient or a geriatric patient so the organoleptic additives to be chosen with utmost care are flavoring agents coloring agents and sweetening agents and it's being an oral preparation good color good taste and flavor is inevitably important and the selection of the organoleptic additives has to be critical having understood the requirements for the preparation of suspension dosage form having understood the importance and having understood the critical things under each head of selection now it is important having selected the components of the formulation what has to be the methodology the methodology will change based on the nature of the drug if the nature of the drug which is under study is diffusible solid the methodology is different and it will change when the selected drug is in diffusible solid so first to discuss and to understand the methodology or the compounding procedure for a suspension containing diffusible solid is after having selected all the excipients and the drug for formulation preparation first the drug has to be taken in the desired quantity it has to be size reduced finely and then other solid additives out of the categories what we mentioned have to be selected and triturated with the drug or mixed with the drug with doubling method now doubling method is mainly to ensure uniform distribution so if the concentration of drug is 0.25 mg for example then the solid additives mixture 0.25 mg should be added initially and then gradually in geometrical progression the rest of the quantity of the mixture of the solid excipients should be added step by step and the fine drug and the solid additives should be mixed once they have been mixed a small amount of vehicle should be added to it and levigated or triturated in order to form a smooth paste free of gritty particles now the smooth paste which is formed will help in reducing the air which is entrapped between the inter particle space once a smooth paste is formed other side soluble additives should be taken in vehicle and dissolved and the mixture of additives and the solvent or the vehicle should be added in thin stream to the smooth paste in smaller ratios with continuous trituration pouring this dispersion medium uh, totally into the smooth paste and then once the dispersion is formed uniformly it is to be transferred in a teared container now teared container should be pre marked to the final volume desired once the dispersion is poured uniformly into the teared container the remaining volume of the solvent should be used to rinse the uh, container and transfer it into the teared bottle and adjust the volume up to the desired mark so this is a general methodology when a suspension containing diffusible solid is formulated similarly when a preparation has an indiffusible solid the methodology will slightly change initially wherein first the drug which is an indiffusible solid has to be weighed accordingly transferred into a mortar and pestle size reduced and to this dry form of suspending agent or the surfactant should be added both the powders should be uniformly mixed and little amount of vehicle should be added in order to form a smooth paste sometimes the suspending agent which is added may not be in dry form it could be a gum mucilage and then it is triturated and made us into a smooth paste and remaining procedure is on the same lines as discussed with that of diffusible solids that is straining the dispersion to remove any foreign particle pouring it into a teared bottle adjusting the final volume by rinsing the motor and making up to the mark in my next series we will be continuing with the compounding procedure of suspensions and classical examples thank you